In this session, I will show you the process how we can create this measurement cup. It has few complicated looking areas, but again, breaking problems down into sub problems makes this pretty easy. So for example, you see the sides are different. And if I go to this view, also here you see this is slightly angled. Also, we have a curved trim edge and we have a handle that has a nice fillet here but it's flush on the top and if we look from here it's flat and then the handle top surface is slightly domed. So again this looks pretty complicated but understanding the step by step how to build everything makes this pretty easy. Before we go ahead again I created myself a sketch. I, just for the sake of being quick, uh, I created boxes. So I can take a box and then, for example, give it a height. The width doesn't necessarily matter. So you see, I put down a nice grid and then I started drafting the actual profiles I want to get. And of course, this file again you have inside the Eating Cooking Utilities folder and I created a transparent version. So let's go into Fusion and let me show you how we start. This will actually be a complete Fusion video as well. I will show a proper surfacing approach and then at the end I will show how for example the handle we can do via T-splines right inside Fusion. Because of that part we don't need to go into Blender. So step one, we want to set up our scene. We can go to the top view and then attach canvas and I will select the top plane so that is actually the X and Y then I can select an image and measuring cup there it is okay and then for example this will be the top view we can keep this for the moment okay because we have to do the scaling now in something like blender we would create a reference geometry and then scale the image so that the 100 millimeter line matches the 100 millimeter geometry fusion has actually a better tool here it has a calibrate so right mouse button click on the canvas then really zoom in you don't see what's going on there's no UI but if you know left mouse button click there is a green dot so measurement one let's go to here and measurement two and then we can say well this should not be 5.5 millimeter but 100 and let's zoom out and there so the image is correctly scaled perfect now we have to move the image so right click edit canvas and then can move this one up maybe it's click ok do this one more time edit canvas uh, i wanted to see that widget somewhere else there so maybe let's say 0.7 and there it is perfect good so top view is done also here again I just work with one image so in case I have to update something in the original design in Gravit or Illustrator or Affinity I only have to export one image and then I can refresh it side view we do exactly the same attached canvas click on this one then we will select our measuring cup there and uh, we have to flip it so the horizontal flip we can move this one up and maybe let's see oh perfect that matches so actually that was kind of silly because it was not the correct part this one has to go down Okay, mm, minus 5.5, 5. 
Ooh, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.2, 0 0.05, 0 0.45. Yeah. Okay. Good. So let's rotate, and you see the image is not the correct scale. So also here, calibrate. Let's zoom in. And then the more you zoom in, the more precisely you can position the line. Let's go to here and there and say 100. Okay. Let's zoom out and see what happened. Then you see that because we scaled the image, hmm, the image moved up, which is like with the first image, it is actually better. Import the image, calibrate it, and then we can position it. Okay, uh, I want to make one quick step back to Gravit. And uh, if you create in Gravit or Illustrator or in any vector app a reference line to measure, pay attention to that here's my point. So this is really truly 100 millimeters. And you see the stroke ends at the line. So when you go to the appearance, here we can cap it with a square, round it, or trim it. And this is the type of the end you want for a measurement line because this is actually longer than 100 millimeters. Okay, so everything is done. Our scene is set up and now we are ready to start creating our sketches. So the easiest way to start is with basically the measuring cup and not the handle. So we can go into top view and for the moment this one I will turn off. I don't need it. Let's make a sketch right on the XY plane at the ground. Then with a circle from the center 77 enter and there we are. Perfect. So that's good. Now we can create the next profile, which now you might think, well, how do we do this? Well, this is an arced surface. Well, we actually have to build everything bigger and then later we just trim everything. So we can create an offset plane and I just build it a little bit bigger, not too much, maybe, yeah, 109. You see 104, that's kind of like here, so 109 is good, perfect. So another sketch on this construction plane. Let's go to top view. And there are now, so the bigger circle is 118. But then you see also to the tip, it gets tighter. So it's not a circle anymore. We can, in this case, actually use an arc. So let's go ahead and we can use the, where is it? There, three point arc, maybe from there to there to there. Okay. So this and this, they should be vertical to each other and at least one point vertical to the center of the circle. Okay. Let's add a dimension. So this is 60. So currently the diameter would be 120. And this is actually maybe okay. There's another thing we have to adjust and you will see that in a moment. So then we can go with a spline here, click to there, click OK from here, snap to that point, click OK. And then we will do a G1 tangency between the spline and the arc. So you see you now the arc flows into the spline and then it meets there. Perfect. OK. We can do a little test. Let's go to patch. And when I started building this one, this was pretty much the same process I used because you don't necessarily always know how to do everything. And then step by step, you try to figure everything out. 
So this seems to be getting close, but here, yeah, maybe, maybe we're getting close to that, that part. Okay, so this area here is fine. And this actually should be arced. And also here, this should be arced. So hmm, how can I do that? So I will actually keep the surface as a helper. And then later we can remove it. I will create a new construction plane. And maybe this was 109. So 109 divided by 2. Okay, so there we are. New sketch. And now I would like to go intersect the surface and this surface with the sketch. So now, for example, where is this endpoint? This is pretty, pretty much why I wanted that. Okay, good. So I also know this will be an arc and then there I have this extension, but this point has to be a little bit further out. So I get a nice bend also when I look from the right. Okay, so the way how we can do this is I'm, I'm going to put myself a small helper line to here. So I know just maybe, maybe there. This was badly placed. Good. And maybe I put one line here. Okay, good. And the main reason for all that was simply so I have a little bit of a reference. And maybe I do one line there. Good. So all this I can delete now. And I will go back to the arc, and maybe there, and there, and there. Okay, so this one I want to put to there, and this one I want to there. So you, that is correct. You, and you, that is correct. And then you, and you. So now I can only move actually this arc left and right. Good. So I will add a small distance, let's say two millimeters. And I can actually see drag this point and make it bigger. So now I get close to maybe where initially it was and also there you see that. And this we want to meet there but this one has to be bigger than there. So one more, one more, there. Okay, perfect, good. So, and then with this one, see we can move this one left and right as needed. Great. My do another spline to there and from there to there. And then I do again Tangency, perfect. And this one now I can delete. These were all just some visual helpers. And because I want to drive later all the dimensioning, I, I add my dimensions to here. Good, okay. So now I, in this mode, with all my three sketches. First, maybe I should name those. Cup bottom, this is cup top, and this is cup mid section. I can go ahead, select loft and say you, to you, to you, ignore the warning because just tells you it can't show it because nothing is visible. And there we are. Okay, now I don't really see my, my sketch. So right click onto edit 
canvas. Come on. Hmm. Hold on one second, my I'm working in Sierra right now and there seems to be some bugs and there we are. Display through. Okay, perfect. So hmm, actually I got pretty close already. You see by luck I hit that curvature pretty good. So that means that this point is good. Also here this at the moment seems to be, I don't know if this is a straight line, we can measure this later. And also here we have a little bit of curvature, not too much. Well, that's good. Okay, so let's say we want to measure if, if this is really a nice straight line. So what we can do is just on the side we make a, uh, a sketch, then we will project this one in. Let's turn everything else off and then maybe draw a line and to zoom in and wow oh, I must have positioned them pretty good because you can see that it overlays really nicely so dum 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 let's go back for example we can hide this one Oh, hold on, no, 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 I used the wrong one. Ha! I had the, the other mesh which I projected into, so let's project this body. Okay, so and then let's draw a line there. Now we can see it's actually a little bit concave. Mm, that is not good. So we want to fix that. So what we will do is this one. That one we have to adjust a little bit. And maybe we move this one 1.5. Okay, now we see it's actually a tiny tick convex. 1.75. Now we're getting close, but actually, you know what? I don't mind this a little bit convex. Yeah. Perfect. This is not too too convex, so we can't pull it out of the injection mold, so this will be fine. So this sketch we can delete. Good. Also, this first surface we created, we don't need anymore. So we can also and delete that one because we don't need it anymore. It was just a helper surface. So I would say our main cup is actually done. So what we do next is we fill the bottom, then we can cap it, the bottom, stitch it, and for example, let's fill it. So this one, maybe five, mm, doesn't look good. Let's add this one and five. This is really not good. So we switch from constant to court. And also for the end, the corner type. Uh, I, oh, we can't even have a selection. It does this one automatically. So this is a beautiful corner for us. Perfect. Looks pretty good. Great. So what do we do next? Well, we actually want to later, let's maybe go back, core this inner area out. And I don't really want to create new sketches and build everything. So with this surface created, I can simply create myself an offset surface and then later use that to core everything out. So I only have one set of sketches. So again, try to automate as, as much work as possible. So this whole object, maybe I want to offset by uh, not 0.5, but 
but minus five millimeters, which probably will result into all the fillets to go down. Okay, so in that case, hold on one second. I think it's better to offset whoops, this sharp edged model or hard edge model, minus five. Okay, and then we can round this part and then for example we can adjust that part. But before we continue, there is something I would like to check. So section view, this one. Okay, so there's five millimeter of a distance. That's good. So let's go ahead and then also here select all these fillets or edges and then re-round them the same way. And technically speaking, what I'm doing here is not 100% correct. So when this is a bigger fillet and the surface is offset, so it shrinks, the fillet has to be smaller. So if we do this maybe 2.5 millimeter, we would technically speaking get something that is more, more accurate. Okay, so let's... Uh, take a look at the section view again because what's important is that the material thickness between the walls is equal to the material thickness between also the fillets. So let's go back to this fillet and I will turn this one into five and you see it's probably growing a little bit. Um, so maybe three, one. So you can see how that shapes it. Whoops, <laughs> a little bit too big. But um, I don't really want to have too much of a, sh a small fillet in the back, so maybe uh, not in the back, in the inside for cleaning purpose, so maybe with three. I will do it that way. So let's turn this one off. Okay, perfect. So now we have actually the outer cup and the inner cup. Next step is we cap this one and then we stitch it. And then we cap this one and we stitch it together into a solid. Perfect. So now I have two solids and because Fusion has awesome solid tools, we can say U minus U, cut this one out there. So there's now our cup. Pretty perfect, you see. Okay, good. So this was basically the step for how to create the main body and then now I can show you how we will do the handle. So I jumped ahead a little bit so uh, you don't see me doing all these steps because they're pretty repetitive but you see along this spline using the along a plane along path command I created one two three four planes and then I created one, two, three, four sketches. And I showed actually all the dimensions. So you can, for a moment, take a look at them, take a note, maybe make a screenshot, so you have all these numbers. But you see at the, the bottom, it's all around four millimeters, 29, 30, 26, 28 millimeters, 20, 15.5, 19, and 17.5. So the way how I did those, let me actually show you uh, one step. And let's make one more sketch here. Okay, so and on this plane, I make the sketch. I just drew a line. I made sure the line is drawn with a horizontal constraint and then I will add a point at the midsection. This point I can, can then snap to the sketch center. I don't have to include the path because I used a, 
plane along uh, this, the curve. So the center of my sketch plane is always registered along that spline. So coincident this point to there. D dimension maybe 28, okay. Toolbox and then a spline, three points. Uh, what happened there? I did not want that to be 3D included. Let's undo this. There, okay, D, and then can click this handle point, drag down, and this should be for you to you, let's say around 20. Okay, so that's pretty much what I did. And with this, you can then basically create, as you can see, the cross sections uh, width wise or depth wise, and also can see here this is wider and then it gets more narrow. Okay, so let me delete these two steps. So why did I do this? Well, we could actually now go ahead and use the loft command and say one, two, three, four, uh, there. Mm, let's maybe take this point for the moment. Could maybe say, tangent, okay, and this is not really super. Also here it doesn't match it. So now we could say, well, use this, and then uh, this one here complains. And this is actually a tricky surface, so let's turn this one off for the moment. And then we have something like this. Okay, good. But the problem, as you can see, is while this matches, this here doesn't really match. So there are two ways to solve this. Let's delete this for the moment. I will make a new sketch just on this plane. And then I will intersect this line, or uh, sorry, this sketch, this sketch, and the sketch and I will 3D include this sketch. Click, 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 click. So you see there I have all these points and now I can create a new spline from those cut points where the other sketches intersect with the sketch and then I position this one to there and this one maybe a little bit like this. Okay, good. So with this, I have actually another rail. So let's do the same thing again. U to U to U to U along this rail plus along this rail. Let's go to a side view and let's see what we have. And this is actually pretty good in the inside here. However, unfortunately up here, we start having some problems as you can see. So let's see if maybe we can fix this by using a different selection, U, U and U along this and along this. Uh, fortunately, that doesn't work. Okay, good. So, um, let's make this one handle profile inside. Because there I have actually this 3D included line. I press X because I want that to be Uh, why can't I select this one and turn it into, oh, I'm not in the sketch mode. Whoa, whoa. Click and X there. Now it is a construction line. So I can't select it for anything uh, to create a surface. So let's go back and let's see, well, what could we maybe do to solve this? Well, let's do this loft one more time. And in this case, I select this one. And let's see how how this turned out. So 
interesting. So the inside is good. Mm, this area is not good. So maybe maybe we can try to fix this with two additional profiles. So let's try this out. I start down here. So roughly there I want to have another sketch on this construction plane, another line dot coincident so 29 and 30 so maybe let's make this one 31 so it's a tick wider and then spline you to you to you dimension this one as a distance and let's dimension this one and maybe let's make this one five gets a little bit wider or maybe seven no this is too much six yeah okay it's kind of like where your fingers go around good so quick check one two three four five and along this one oh I forgot the last one here and there okay so you see I'm actually not using this uh, finger profile I created but by having this additional spline in between I get the transition I'm nearly looking for <laughs> okay so let's still use this one gives us a problem I don't know why okay so maybe let's click cancel one more time so you to you to you to you to you plus you ah of course that can't work main reason is because um, the curve doesn't run through it so I made a little little mistake there so this one here I will delete for the moment I have to do recreate this one when once I'm done so and I think here we said we want to have one additional profile so the art here is try to figure out how many do I really only need and when I'm adding too much um, making it too complex for the software and also making it too too labor-intensive for myself because at a certain point the complexity becomes exhausting to to keep in mind so 26 27 25 maybe okay it's blind there to there to there dimension the distance and this one here being a four good so in this one I would like to show the dimension and the same here okay so let's do another loft just out of curiosity go to a side view and um, this is actually pretty good already the insight so let's tell the software to use this part and what's going on there you see here it bellies in a little bit which is not really very good so let's see if maybe there's something we can fix there directional uh, unfortunately there's not much really uh, we can do there so let's we can keep this maybe at the free but for for maybe right now um, let's see if, if maybe we can adjust and refine this surface a little bit first so this maybe we make 17.5 so it bellies up more there so it's more concave and maybe this 18 no uh, an 
18. Okay, good. And here that is good. This may be 21. Yeah. Okay. So we know this is not ideal, so we can go back in the timeline and we make again a new sketch. This time we do redo the same steps. So this sketch, this, 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 and this, and then 3D include, please. This one, okay. So now I can draw a new profile this time because we added two more sketches. We needed to recreate this one because we link actually these fit points at uh, the tip points of those cross sections. So let's take a look. Okay, uh, double click here X, so it's this, and let's take a look. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then maybe the inside. Okay, the outside is not very good. So let's see now with the outside in addition. Ah, see, this works a little bit better now. Nice. Okay, good. So, perfect. So we needed a little bit more surface to help the um, the loft command to create everything the way I want. Click OK. Perfect. Now, because this is again parametric, um, it's a little bit of work, but then we can go ahead and nicely, as you can see, play with everything and adjust it. Let's maybe go to a top view because I want to make sure that what I have here matches. So you see this is a tick too small, so 26.5, uh, 27. Good. And this is as it looks too short, 30. Yeah. This is a 29.5. Mm hmm okay good so the tip doming this is actually a tricky tricky task and um, what I find the easiest way is to make a new sketch with a blend curve and then we actually loft this this profile to this not yet existing C and I will show you how that goes now but before we continue, uh, let's maintain proper stuff. So maybe H6 uh, and maybe H7. Technically speaking, we would have to rename them correctly so it makes sense. And this is actually our handle inside profile. Okay, good. So off, off. Let's make a new sketch. This time we will work with a 3D sketch. So include 3D, this edge and this edge of my surface because this creates a nice flow. And uh, I would like to 3D include this tip of my edge, uh, sorry, of that spline because now I can create a new spline from there to there and then link those via tangency constraint and there we have a nice transition. Okay, let's take a look from the side. Now this is wobbly, but again, this is okay. We build everything bigger and then we trim that off anyway. Maybe we can call this one tip. Okay, so let's show this surface. We want to see just this uh, spline and here, uh, no, not in you, there, 
these two 3D included edges we with X turn into construction lines. So I cannot select them for the loft command because of the loft command now we can uh, turn chain off and say this C place loft to this C along this rail and make sure in my case profile one is set to tangent so we have a, a proper surface flow click OK perfect okay stitch stitch and patch this opening and patch this opening and then we stitch everything together to make a solid okay let's um, go to shade it turn this off and this off and let's take a look and I try to see via the highlight if I can see this edge somewhere there's a little here we can see it and right there we can see there's a little bit of a problem so um, let's see if maybe don't want to set this too smooth it shouldn't really do much Uh, uh, clean it up actually a little bit. Okay, maybe let's turn on zebra. Whoops. Oh yeah, zebra. Why actually? Ah, I have a section in there. There we can see something is going on, but ac across this area it is okay. Good. And that area that's bad, we will later clip away anyway. So when you see somewhere a problem, like in my case here, don't don't try to be a perfectionist. If later this problem we can remove by trimming off, then it's actually okay. So at this point now we m might want to call this one handle. This is actually the cup. What's this one? Uh, that's the old handle, so we can delete it. And we are now ready to assemble everything. So this command that actually cut the, um, the two cups, we remove. I don't want that anymore. Also this and this actually I will group because it is actually just all my my handle stuff, stop sketching. Create there. Okay. So what I can do now is first step. I will combine the handle with the bigger cup. Okay. Then I will combine the bigger cup and cut the smaller cup out. So this way the handle does not stick through. So then before I continue anything trimming, I will actually fill it this edge. So I make this edge nice and big because now I can create the surface that trims everything off. That's better to fillet this first and then trim the fillet and then later having a trimmed edge and then doing a fillet, which when I tried it also provided a less optimal result. Okay, so we can turn this one back on because now it's time to do our last stuff. So plane along path, let's say down here and plane along path maybe let's say around there okay sketch on here and I will create a mirror line from the center and then 
I know actually this is going to be just a basic spline. Symmetry, these two spline points to this uh, line we created. Okay, and then we can dimension this. So this may be, let's say, 65. And this may be 30. Okay, good. Not good. This was silly. Bing, bing, bing. Because I would go right actually along this line. I forgot one step. So in, in this spline or sketch, with pressing O, I will make an offset sketch one millimeter into my body. Yes, that is correct. Stop sketch. Okay, let's take a look. You see this one perfectly runs through the handle. Good. Now along this one we will create here a plane and there a plane maybe plus minus. So let's do the same. Here we want whoops I pressed A by accident terrible blender habit because A is select everything and select nothing. Okay, so let's make a line. This line we turn into construction, symmetry, these two points to this line, dimension, the distance, 65. Well, I by accident clicked this correctly from there. Okay, so that was number one. Next one here, we actually just need a line. So from there to there, dimension, this is something. I will show you in a second why what I'm doing. So I will make another line there delete this one. The interface was lagging a little bit, which is why it didn't draw the line. Double click this one onto this. So we'll copy the value. And here I want to know what's this one. Um, doesn't actually tell me the dimension name. Okay, you know what? We can always do it this way. D72. Okay. And here D72. And there we are. Okay, so it's the same width. So why did I do this? Pretty simple. Now we can go to the sweep command and say you and you sweep along this path, but only along the right direction. You see this one, I moved back to the center. Okay, good. And now we will switch to the loft command and say, please loft this C to these two edges, use smooth, and please use this rail. Let's go take a look from the side. And there you can see now how in the cup the surface is flat and then increasingly it starts arcing. And the arcing basically defines how much uh, the top surface of my handle will be curved. Okay, good. This is fine. So maybe we can call this one handle trim arc and maybe handle trim flat. And the reason why I want this one to be flat outside the cup, so when I cut the cup, 
it's all nice and flat. Now we can go to modify split body U split via you can see it selects the different surfaces so don't select this inside the 3D view just go to ah oh, they're not stitched so these two we have to stitch first and maybe we can call this one trim so you know what I'm doing split body U split see there again it selects the different parts but here it's just one object including all three surfaces click OK and then you and you right click remove we can hide this one and there it is you see perfect let's go a little bit of filleting I'm inside the patch mode but you see the filleting actually here works also on a solid so uh, let's say 1.5 millimeter and there we are click OK let's take a look what we have no, this is a nice curvature this got a little bit flat we might have to adjust this a little bit based on maybe how how wide this maybe the profile here has to be a little bit wider here it's nice and flat and then we rotate the view you can see it slowly starts to arc and the arcing is not really very big so if I want this actually to be bigger then maybe I want to show this sketch dimension so here I have 30 let's type in 45 let's wait a moment because it has to redo all the stuff and there we see it maybe 60 there a little bit more so you see actually this arc can be bent quite crazy because from here instantly it starts making a transition into a flat surface up there okay great so that was basically everything how to do this with a proper uh, surfacing approach just only um, sketch and surface tools no t-splines for further refinements for example we can adjust all those sketches so maybe this one maybe we set to let's say 19 to belly this out a little bit more there is you know that fixed this a little bit also here this sketch has a flat part a little bit partially because how I'm also dealing with this element here so if maybe I do it this way so you have to be careful about how you how you play with everything here so that is one area we could adjust I just press uh, uh, undo and maybe like this maybe make this smaller could be maybe we might have to insert another point so that it flows in there differently or maybe like this let's let's take a look how this will work out and this I don't constrain because I want to be able to freely move this around and there and we have it okay so and the appendix video which will be a separate one then I will show you how we can sculpt actually this handle via T-splines because you see it it's clearly possible to do it with traditional surfacing but you see that it's actually a simple looking shape but to get that right there's a lot of um, work we have to put in to create the sketches so we can create the surfaces